Hey friends, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and welcome to part two of our gingerbread structure series. Now, I've got my holiday apron on, it came out of the laundry today. Now, I have about, I have six of these because I made a double recipe. Now, the first thing we're going to bake, now I have to bake enough to make three houses and uh, for our gingerbread party. Also, I have to bake, I'm, I'm dying to try these. This is a, a tin of six star cookie cutters and we're going to use these to make a Christmas tree. So we're going to cut that out. And I even have, where is it? A little tiny star from my fancy dancy cookie cutter for the top of the tree. So that's for my um, tree cookies. And isn't that wonderful that it all came in this little tin? And I have a plain cookie cutter because I have to bake cookies or make more cookies to send to work with my husband tomorrow and my son tomorrow. So let's get on this right away. And I've also cut out my templates for the house. This one's a little wrinkled. And we have a house shape and a rectangle and I just cut those out of I use the CD case for a template and I just use the corner of the CD case for the roof so um, these are, this is all we're going to need for the house all right now I'm not going to save these bags because well they're just not going to be worth saving so I'm just going to rip this down one seam because we got this nice and flattened out and we want to roll these out to about an eighth of an inch. We've got our cloth floured. And we're going to flower our rolling pin. Hey, guess. Now he's chewing on my toes. And this is going to take some muscle because these have been chilled overnight. You want to chill your gingerbread after making it for at minimum of an hour. But if it's chilled overnight or been in the fridge for any longer than three or four hours, you really uh, want to leave it out for a little bit before you try and roll it because this is some stiff dough. All right. Now I need, like I said, I need two of these and two of these for each house. That means I need three times two is six. I need six each. So I'm just going to make sure my template fits on here. And we may have to roll this part out just a little bit more. There we go. Eighth of an inch thick. You don't want it too thick because you don't want it um, being too bulky to handle, but you don't want it too thin or it's going to break. And we're just going to take a knife and cut around. Now see why I said why would we buy the kits? Because this is so simple. You can cut windows out and doors with cookie cutters which is what we're going to do. Alright. This dough is lovely. Now you see why I flour a cloth. It's so much easier to get the dough up and off. And there's two and it looks like there's going to be six needed or six is just going to fit on my big cookie sheet. Okay, we've got our first house cut out. And it's just about ready to go in the oven. And we're going to bake it at 350 degrees. Two bags makes one house. Two bags of my uh, dough. But first, in the front of the house, we're going to cut out a door. Now, we're going to want to save this door because we can have it icing and propped open nice and welcoming for whoever comes to visit and we're going to cut a window right up here near the peak we'll bake that off as a cookie you know what do you think the window should be stained glass alrighty what kind of Christmas party would this be if I didn't have lifesavers, so I've got a couple of lifesavers here. Somebody's going, oh, don't use a rolling pin for that. It's 
It's alright, I have lots of rolling pins. And we're just going to sprinkle our candy in there. And we're going to bake this at 350 degrees for 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, here's our first batch out of the oven. Let's see if I can move this to show you. And I've gone ahead and put the second batch in. We're only going to make two gingerbread houses because I need gingerbread for other things. Now very, very carefully, you want to let these cool for about 10 minutes and then you're going to remove them and put them on wire racks to cool. My second gingerbread house, I made the window yellow and green. For the simple reason is, we want to know whose gingerbread house is whose. Alright, we'll be back in a bit. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and, oh, there's my clock. It's noon, which means I have an hour and a half to get everything baked before I have to go pick up my son from work and put supper on. Well, supper's going to be a crock pot meal, guys. The country man says, you're getting a reputation. I said, what? He says, you're getting a reputation for being the queen of the one pot wonders. And I said, well, of course, I'm, I'm a busy woman. <laughs> anyway, this is where our star cookie cutters come in. Now, this came from my, like I said, my little fancy cookie cutter. But these I ordered special online because, well, there's just not too many specialty kitchen stores in my area. Let's see if we can turn this over roll it out just a little bit more. Now, the, this is a Christmas tree and I've been dying to make one. Now, we never used to make gingerbread houses. My husband would make them with cardboard and then he would glue the candy on with icing. And because uh, that's the way his dad made it. But this year we're going to do it our way. Now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of these cookie cutters and we're going to want several of each size. We're going to want at least two of the big ones. Let's see. There we go. And we're going to want three. Actually, we're going to want more because we're doing more than one tree, aren't we? So let's do four. Let's make sure, let's line these up so that we know how many we have of each. Oops. And you want to leave a good inch between your cookies, folks, because they do swell. That one's a little thicker. So if we want four of those, we want six of the medium sized ones. And I recommend you cutting out your big ones first. Oops, you got a bent time there. Uh, so that as you get, as you run out of dough, you can use the smaller ones to fill in the cracks. Or to cut in the cracks. No, oh, I may have to roll this up some more. One thing about gingerbread is when you're decorating with it, you, can, you want it to be a little tougher than your delicate cookies. So you want to mush this dough back up. I still have two bags left, but then remember, I've got to make gingerbread cookies as gifts for tomorrow. When I do my shopping, and my husband takes the cookies into work, and I, I'm certainly not going to be giving out all my really good stuff. Well, actually, all my stuff's really good, but let's just pretend that your husband gave you a frying pan for Christmas here instead of a diamond ring or something. See how much nicer that flattens out when you think that way? Isn't that awful? I would never hit Wolfie with a rolling pin. Not unless I meant not to get up again, that's for sure. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five mediums. We want one more of these. Because this is for two treats. And we just may be decorating the trees tomorrow. Oh, there's my, there is my other gingerbread house ready to come out of the oven. I will be right back. Okay, so, sorry about that, I thought the camera was on. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of the big ones. Now, I am going to mark these so that we know which ones are which. These are going to go in the oven for 8 to 10 minutes at 350 degrees. And we'll be back to do the rest of the cookies. Okay, our second gingerbread house is out of the oven. 
and our star cookies for our trees have gone in and I think we're going to do the trees tomorrow night when Mel's here so we'll do that video tomorrow and on Sunday we'll do the gingerbread houses when the rest of the gang is here but right now I'm just going to take some ordinary everyday cookie cutters and I'm just going to do the rest of this gingerbread up into some cookies now I still have two packages of that gingerbread dough left and I think I don't need it. I think I'm going to put it in the freezer for next year. It should stay good till next year. Or if somebody drops in, oh there's my phone. I'll be right back. Okay that was my nephew on the phone. He's uh, sending out Christmas cards today on the 19th of December and he wanted me for postal codes and whatnot because apparently I have a memory that's retarded he said uh, he asked me for a postal code of a family member in uh, California and I gave it to him and he said Aunt Bev when was the last time somebody asked you that question I said what for the postal code he said yes I said I don't know he said exactly you just rhymed it off the top of your head he said that's retarded I said well I got a memory for numbers I guess anyway we are going to um, cut out a few of these cookies. Like I said, I'm going to save the other two bags of dough for an emergency cookie baking session in case somebody drops in with children. It's always good to have some cookie dough on hand, you know. I'll leave them at the uh, cookie dough in the fridge. And this is just getting small. Oh, Angus, you are so naughty. I, can, I don't know if you can hear him snarling and growling and running around with his ball. And the ball, of course, is way too big for his mouth, so we got him a ball with a... Stop worrying your aunties. He's just... The Boston Terriers are just cowering at my feet because he's going nuts. Anyway, it's always good to have some cookie dough on hand in the fridge in case people drop by with children and you want to visit. You can set them down with a rolling pin and a cookie cutter and let them have the kids have at her while you have a visit and a cup of coffee. All right, I'm just going to make one tray of these cookies. Our star cookies are now out of the oven, so these can go in. Oh, let's do another toadstool. There we go. And let's give this last little bit of cookie dough to the puppy dogs. Now, I want you folks to see this because he's nine weeks old what do you got in your mouth get that give me that jumpins sit good boy there he goes all right we've got now i don't want to use up all these because we do have the gingerbread houses to decorate so let's just go ahead and put some of these mint chips we'll just press a few in there and I've got some lovely snowflake. These are really, I was so tickled to find these. These are teeny tiny little white snowflakes. Look at that. I don't know how well you can see that. But we'll just sprinkle a few on here and there. These are little hard sour candies. And they're little Christmas trees and snowmen. So, alrighty. I'm going to pop these in the oven. Again, at 350 degrees for, I don't know, 8 to 10 minutes. And uh, when these come out of the oven, we'll be back. Okay, what I've gone and done is I've got put all the pieces for one gingerbread house in a parchment lined pan now that they're cool. And I've put the other one in a parchment lined pan so that we can keep them separate. And once our tree cookies are cool, I'm going to put them in a pan uh, uh, and put these all aside for decorating time. Okay, there's our gingerbread cookies. Now I probably could have decorated better, but I haven't got my royal icing made yet. And uh, that's another story. All right, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying, don't be afraid to do this in stages. You He's really driving those girls up the wall. What are you doing? What's he doing to you girls? He thinks he's getting a treat. No, I don't think so. Anyway, don't be afraid to do this in stages. Uh, make the dough one day, make the cookie and, and parts the next. Don't kill yourself. It's a big job if you want to do more than one. All right? 
we will see you when I make the royal icing.